Welcome once again to Miami Foursquare Church. Thank you for inviting us in, taking the time to uh, look at these videos as we produce them. We hope that so much that they are a blessing to your heart, that they enrich your lives. This morning, Pastor Dave will be speaking on the power of worship. What does it mean to worship? How has God moved in the past through worship? And this morning we would just want to enjoy what the word that he's going to bring to us today. Let's just open this in prayer. Father in heaven, as Pastor Dave is going to open up the word today for us, Lord Jesus, we pray for your hand upon it, that it should touch our hearts and minds that we should see you and what you have in store for us through this message. We thank you again, Lord, for our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the Miami Foursquare Church. We're glad you're here with us this morning, and we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to study the Word, and we're going to let God speak with prayer with me. Father, we thank you for this time that we can be together. We're thankful that your presence is here and we can experience you and that your word is powerful and we can have the truth in our hearts. I pray today that what we learn and what is spoken from your word will be put deep into our hearts, that we'll act upon it and see results. And I thank you for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You know, there's power in the things of God. There's power in prayer. We sing the song, there's power in the blood. Today, I want to speak to you about power in praise. And there is power in praise. We are to be people who praise God. In Psalm 150, the psalm reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. <coughs> praise the Lord. See, we're to praise him everywhere you are. We're to praise him for what he has done. We're to praise him for who he is. We're to praise him with every kind of instrument we can find. <clears throat> we come into a church and we sometimes have drums and we have guitars and different instruments. Use it all. Praise him with everything you have. That's why we clap our hands and raise our hands. That's why we sing and shout. That's why we dance before the Lord. We praise him with everything we have. The Bible says that we are to let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So, praise the Lord. But see, something happens when we praise God. There's a, a something physically and spiritually happens when we praise the Lord. In Psalm 22, verse 3, I'm going to read it in two translations. The first one is the King James, and it says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. In other words, God dwells in the praises of his people. When God's people praise, he inhabits their praise. Let me read you the New American Standard Translation. Yet you are holy, O you who are enthroned, upon the praises of Israel. As we praise God, what he does, he sets up his throne. He comes on the scene when we begin to praise him, and he takes authority in any and every circumstance in which we praise. He becomes the Lord of the situation. A number of years ago, they had uh, when a president of our country stepped down, all these people got up and said, 
One said, I'm in charge, and the other one said, no, I'm in charge, no, I'm in charge. And, you know, we like to find out who's the boss. When we praise the Lord, Jesus Christ comes on the scene, and he is the boss. He's in charge. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, it says, Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We are to pray, first of all, without ceasing. That means to be in continual contact with the Lord. And we don't thank him for everything that happens. You know, some things are not put on us by God. Some things are put on us by the enemy. Sometimes it's our own stupid mistakes and, and errors that we make that we bring things upon us. We're not thankful that we make mistakes, but we are thankful in every circumstance. Thankful during the good and during the bad. And it's God's will that we do that. Some people are very selective when they praise the Lord. And the rest of the time they murmur and complain. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says we are to give thanks. Praise him <coughs> in every circumstance. This is God's will that we take this action and have that attitude. Well, what happens when we praise the Lord in this circumstance? There are results that happen. Notice in Romans 8, chapters 27, or verse 27 and verse 28. It says, And he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God works all things together for good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. What happens is when we worship and praise the Lord and the Lord comes on the scene and becomes the Lord of the situation, it says the Spirit knows what's going on and he begins to pray and intercede. I don't know. I like a lot of people praying for me, but I like best of all when the Holy Spirit prays for me and he intercedes according to God's will. And since God is Lord of the situation, he begins to turn things around. Some things come to us, they're not God's will. And God begins to turn them for good. God turns them around and causes them to work out for our good. And that's what we want. It works out for the good of the kingdom. We'll see in a while when we look at some examples. The trials that seem to come and hinder us and bother us, God overrules. Remember, he's Lord of the situation now. What do we have to do? Praise him, love him, just stay in his will, be where he wants you to be, and keep praising him, just keep praising. The songs say, let's just praise the Lord. Well, let's just keep praising the Lord. I want to look at some, biblically, some biblical examples of what happens when people allow God to be the Lord of this situation. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, we find that Joseph is speaking to his brothers. And if you remember the story, his brothers had sold him as a slave and he was transported to Egypt where he was a slave and a servant. And God promoted him and made him the second in command of the rulers of Egypt. Notice when he confronts his brothers, <coughs> they are all fearful that something is going to happen from him. Listen what he says. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people. His brothers wanted to get rid of him. They wanted, they didn't like his bragging. They didn't like his prophetic words. They didn't like his boasting. And they meant it to do him harm. They wanted him out of the way. But God, anytime you have a situation that it seems hopeless, remember, but God, but God turned it into good. Joseph became the ruler. At that time, he saved his whole family. In the famine, he brought his whole family into Egypt. And when they came down there, they were given the very best land. And the 
at that time, it literally was the salvation of Israel because that was the future Israel. That was the great nation that God was going to make into uh, the nation of Israel. And Joseph became the savior of his world at that day. The second story is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And in 2 Chronicles, I'm not going to read all of this, but I want to read a little bit. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. And after this, the Moabites and Ammonites, together with some of the Minuites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. And Joseph was alarmed and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout the land. In other words, here comes this, these big armies, three armies at least, coming against him, and it scared him. Well, some things come against us, and they frighten us. What should you do first? He did the right thing. He sought the Lord. So he, as he seeks the Lord, he prays. One of the interesting things that happens when he prays, and I like this, and you'll find it in verses um, 12 through 15. He talks about it, and then he goes on down in some more parts of it. He begins to remind God of his promises. He said, God, this is what you said would happen. God, this is what you said you'd do. God doesn't mind you reminding him of his promises. He likes it. He wants you to quote the word. He wants you to speak the word. And when he sought the Lord, the answer came. The Spirit of the Lord came upon, in verse 14, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah. And he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or be discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle doesn't belong to you. The battle, listen to that. The battle does not belong to you, but to God. Tomorrow you're to go out, march against them. You'll see them coming. Even told them where they were going to come. <coughs> he says, you take up your position, you stand firm. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Go out and face them. The Lord is with you. Well, that's wonderful to say. Except if you don't have faith, you don't know the outcome. I'm going to teach you some real faith builder here in a minute. He said in verse 20, Jehoshaphat was speaking to the people. In verse um, 20, he said, Hear, O people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Believe his prophets and you will succeed. And so he told him, he said, listen, you believe what the Lord's telling us. You trust what the Lord has spoken through the prophet and you watch, we're going to win. We're going to win. So what did he do? Now, I don't know about you, but you put your elite troops, your hardened troops, you put them front, out front. You put the Marines out front. Aren't the Marines always the first to go? Not in this case, because God's Marines are his worshipers. And he put the choir out in front of the army, and he instructed them, even gave them the words to sing, and they began to sing and praise the Lord. And they went out singing, Give thanks unto the Lord for his loving kindness and devotion endures forever. And as they began to worship and praise the Lord, here they're at the beginning of the army, they're starting to go toward the army and attack them, but they're attacking them with praise. And what happens? Listen to this. Verse 22. This is important. I'm going to repeat this. The moment they began their shouts and praises. Let me repeat that. The moment they began their shouts and praises, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against them. The minute they began to worship and praise, God attacked the enemy. God attacked them and defeated them, and they turned on each other. They didn't have to fight. They didn't have to raise their wep other weapons. They had to praise. And as they did this, the Bible said that for three days they were collecting the spoils. 
They just got to worship and they got to get the rewards that came from it. Let me give you one more story. And this is really a good one. Acts chapter 16. It's the story of Paul and Silas. They'd gone into the town and they had gone in this town and the woman, this girl had followed them and she was demon possessed and Paul got tired of it. He turned around, told the demon to come out and it upset a whole bunch of people. They grabbed Paul and Silas and they beat him really good till their backs were all bruised and sore, probably even bloody. Then they threw him in the dungeon in the prison. And here they are in the prison. It says, after striking them, Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse 23, after striking them with many blows, they threw him into prison and ordered the jailer to guard them securely. <coughs> and on receiving this order, he placed them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in stocks. Wow. Now, here you are, beaten, sore, probably hungry and thirsty. If they did have any water, probably wasn't very fresh. They have chains on their hands, stocks on their feet, and you can't even, listen, you can't even kneel to pray in that position. But the Bible said at midnight they begin to do something. A lot of people, when they get in that situation, why me? Why am I here? What is going on? Too many times people whine and cry and, and have all kinds of bad attitudes at that point in time. Not Paul and Silas. At midnight, at midnight, they began to worship and pray. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. That's important too because those other prisoners are hearing a testimony but they're watching an illustrated sermon. Your life is an illustrated sermon. People watch it when you go through difficult things. They're seeing how you're handling it. And when they see you with your faith and they see you worshiping and praising, it makes a difference. And as they worshiped and praised, suddenly God sent an earthquake, shook the foundation of the prison, the doors flew open, and every chain came loose. <coughs> That's a miraculous. So what are the results of this? As they worship and praise, everybody's set free. The jailer comes running. He's afraid everybody has escaped, and he's going to kill himself. And Paul said, no, don't do that. Come on. We're all still here. You know what it ended up resulting? Is that the jailer got saved. The jailer got saved. And he took Paul and Silas home and treated their wounds. And his whole family got saved. And the next morning, the people come to see what happened. And found out that Paul was a Roman citizen. And all oh, they wanted him to leave right then. No, sir, he said. Y'all are going to come down here because I'm going to preach again. And Paul gave his go the gospel and the message out. The result was they got to minister to the whole city with signs following. This was God's promise. God promised that where two or three are present in Matthew 18, 20, are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Who was in that dungeon with them? Jesus Christ. As they worship he began to move against what was holding them in bondage and he set them free. It is amazing that we live in a day and age where it's easy to complain. If you look at a lot of the programs that um, and social medias, all it is is people complaining and complaining. God doesn't want his people to be complaining. He wants his people to be people who praise. That's why over and over he says, praise the Lord, worship and praise. God will keep his word. When you're going through difficult times, learn to praise the Lord. Let him take charge. That's what he wants to do. But listen, don't wait for a bad day or a bad time to come. Learn to make continual praise and worship a way of life. Let's bow our heads. There may be some of you here that are listening this morning and you've not even accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
and I'm going to ask you to do that now. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to receive you as a child, his child, and forgive you your sins. And if you believe that, he'll come in and live in your life and rule. Lord, we pray right now, as we, as people are accepting you, they'll receive you and they'll accept you as the Lord of their life. And I pray for those that are listening to this, that they will make the decision that they'll be a person who worships and prays. Lord, let them learn to let that be their lifestyle, that that's the way they live. In every circumstance, they worship you, they praise you, and they see you come on the scene and make a difference because truly you are Lord when we worship you. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for that wonderful word. We need to make sure that we are continuing to praise even in those hard and difficult times. So what are our announcements for this week? Well, we've had this last couple days I have been experiencing the Youth Summer Digital Camp. It has been amazing. So if you didn't get to see some of the videos, they are on YouTube under South under Foursquare Next Gen on the YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure Matt will put up the where it is so you can find it, but you can go there and you can still watch some of the videos. We have had a really good time with those. Also want to thank you for all who have been sending in your tithes and offerings. We appreciate your faithfulness to your church. And we do have a little bit of sad news. On Monday, Sister Ina will be moving away. She will be moving to Texas. Even though she's moving away, she is still part of our family. So if any of you want to send letters or send anything to her or let her know, you can contact us. We will have her address as well. For now, I, she told me she's going to keep her same phone number, so she'll still be in contact with us. But just so you know, we went and visited her, and she is going to miss all of us. Can't think of anything else right now. We do know next month we are going to be having some back to school. Kids are going to be going back to school, and most of you will be going back digitally. However, kids will still need some school supplies. So we'll be letting you know over the coming weeks how we can help some of these kids who have to do school at home. My family is starting school this week, so my kids are all excited because they get to learn some new things, especially in science. So I hope you have a blessed week. Stay safe and know we are praying for you. If you need anything or have any prayer requests, please either let us know or you can even let the Lewises know so we can be praying for you. We love you all and have a blessed week.